The Middle Ages, which roughly spanned from the 5th to the late 15th century, are often surrounded by myths and misconceptions that have been perpetuated over time. These myths can oversimplify or distort the historical realities of the era. Hi, my name is Jess and we're going to look at the top 10 myths about the Middle Ages we all believed. Number 10, Dark Ages. The term Dark Ages historically referred to the early medieval period, roughly around the 5th to the 10th century. It was characterized by the decline of the Western Roman Empire and the substantial social, economic, and cultural changes in Europe. However, it's important to note that the term Dark Ages is now considered outdated and has fallen out of favor among historians due to its negative and inaccurate connotations. While there were challenges, including the decline of the Roman Empire, the era also saw significant achievements in art, literature, and architecture, particularly during the later medieval period. Period. While Europe experienced significant changes, the Islamic world saw a period of flourishing intellectual and cultural achievements known as the Islamic Golden Age. This included advancement in science, mathematics, and philosophy. Feudalism, a social economic system characterized by land ownership and the exchange of land for service, became a dominant feature of medieval society. Towards the end of the Dark Ages, there was a gradual revival of trade and the beginnings of urbanization. Towns and cities started to grow and commercial activities began to increase. Number 9. Brutal and Violent Society The perception of Middle Ages as particularly brutal and violent period is a common historical stereotype. While there were instances of actual lot of violence and conflict during the Middle Ages, it's essential to avoid painting the entire era with a broad brush. The reality is more complex with both positive and negative aspects. The medieval period also saw the development of the Code of Chivalry, a set of moral and social rules that knights were expected to follow. The code emphasizes virtues such as honor, bravery, and protection of the weak. However, the actual adherence of these ideas deals varied as legal systems in the Middle Ages included various forms of punishment, including corporal punishment and execution. Trials by ordeal were sometimes used to determine guilt or innocence, although they were not as common as often portrayed. While violence and conflict were part of the medieval world, the era also had periods of stability, cultural growth, and the development of institutions that laid the groundwork for later societal advancement. Number 8. Monolithic Catholic Church The Middle Ages saw the dominance of the Catholic Church, but it wasn't a monolithic entity. There were other other internal debates, uh, schisms, and different religious practices. The relationship between the church and secular rulers were complex and multifaceted. The Pope, based in Rome, was a central position of authority within the Catholic Church. However, the papacy faced challenges including periods of papal schisms where there were rival claimants to the papal throne. The Middle Ages saw theological debates and discussions within the church. For example, the scholastic movement, led by figures like St. Thomas Aquinas, aimed to reconcile faith and reason and contribute to intellectual developments. While the Catholic Church was significantly an influential institution during during the Middle Ages, it is essential to recognize its internal diversity, the existence of various religious orders, and the complex interactions between the church and secular authorities. Number 7. Ignorance and Lack of Education The idea that the people of the Middle Ages were universally ignorant or lacked education is actually inaccurate. Monasteries and Catholic schools were centers of learning, and there were scholars who were preserved and transmitted classical knowledge. Additionally, medieval universities emerged during this time. Monasteries played a crucial role in preserving knowledge during the early medieval period. Period, monks were often scribes and scholars who copied and preserved classical texts both religious and secular. The later medieval period saw the emergence of cathedral schools and universities. Institutions like the University of Bologna and the University of Paris became centers of learning. During the Middle Ages, there were significant interactions between Islamic scholars and those in the Christian Europe. Translations of Greek and Roman texts from Arabic to Latin, also known as the Islamic Golden Age, contributed to revival of learning. Despite the challenges such as limited resources and labor-intensive processes of manuscript production, Libraries and monasteries and universities housed a considerable number of books. These manuscripts were often beautifully illuminated and contained a wealth of knowledge. In continuation in regards to education, I highly recommend uh, everyone to read the book Utopia to see how they saw back in the day. Number 6. Lived in Castles the image of everyone in the Middle Ages living in grand castles is a misconception. While castles were a symbol of power for nobility, the majority of people lived in villages, towns, and rural areas in more modest dwellings. Castles were the residence of the ruling elite, providing not only living quarters, but also serving in administrative centers and military strongholds. There were also fortified structures designed for defense during times of conflict, and the majority of the population actually lived in villages and towns. In rural areas, common dwellings included simple cottages made out of wood, thatch, and wattle, and dowel 
12 in towns, houses were also built as closely together as some had upper floors made of timber. Number five, no hygiene or sanitation. While medieval hygiene practices may not have been matched modern standards, they were often, you know, maintained of cleanliness. Public baths were common, and some cities were had rudimentary sewage systems. The perception of pervasive filth is an exaggeration. Of course, wealthier individuals, especially in noble households, had private bathing facilities or bathing facilities. Castles and manor houses sometimes featured ba bathing rooms, and there was a record of medieval people enjoying private baths. While there may not have been a daily bathing routine as we know today, medieval individuals did practice personal hygiene. Just not all the time. Washing hands and faces, cleaning teeth, and combing their hair were common activities. But of course, there were some even in royalty who had issues just taking care of themselves, like King Charles VI or King James I. If you want to check a video out that we have actually deep dived on these royals being gross, you can check it out here on Top 10 Disgusting Acts Performed by European Kings. Number 4. All Women Were Oppressed while women's roles were often restricted, the lives of medieval women were diverse. Women could hold positions of power in noble families or religious institutions. Additionally, women played crucial roles in agriculture, trades, and crafts. As mentioned earlier, while educational purposes for women were limited compared to men, there were instances of noble women and women in religious orders receiving education. As an example, Juana Inaz de la Cruz was also a very educated woman in Mexico who engulfed herself in religion as well as in the written works. She constantly defended women's rights to formal education and advocate women's rights to serve as intellectual authorities not just through the act of writing but through publication of their writing. She heightened the importance of women teaching other women to protect younger women from older men from who might, you know, entice them into intimate situations, which is pretty intense for the Middle Ages, but we love her for that. Number 3, flat earth belief. The idea that the medieval people believed in a flat earth is also a misconception and a myth. By the Middle Ages, educated individuals including scholars like Bede and Thomas Aquinas, St. Thomas Aquinas, were aware of the earth's spherical nature. The ancient Greeks also had demonstrated this knowledge and the idea of a spherical earth was actually well known, educated to the Romans and early Christian scholars such as Augustine of Hippo did not dispute the earth's shape. The knowledge of a spherical earth was preserved in monastic and scholarly circles during the Islamic golden age uh, within the 14th, 8th to 14th century. Scholars like Al Hassan ibn al Hasham and Al Biruni further contributed to the understanding of the earth's shape. Islamic scholars had also access to and built upon the works of ancient Greeks and Roman thinkers, and among educated individuals in medieval Europe the idea of a spherical earth was widely accepted. Scholar theologians and navigators recognized the evidence supporting a round earth, such as the changing of positions of the stars as one travels north or south. Even in medieval arts and maps, the earth was also depicted as a sphere, as the Herefor Mappa Mundi, a medieval world map from the late 13th century, is also one of example that shows a spherical earth. Number 2. Constant Warfare while there were periods of conflict, not every day in the Middle Ages was consumed by warfare as there were extended periods of peace, trade, and cultural development. Many regions experienced stability and prosperity as medieval European society was organized in a feudal structure where local lords, knights, and monarchs held the land in exchange for military service. While this structure could contribute to conflicts, it also aimed to maintain a degree of stability. There were extended periods of peace during the Middle Ages. For example, the 12th century is often referred to as the Long Peace for some regions of Western Europe. During these times, economic activities as trade and cultural developments flourished as some regions experienced periods of political stability, allowing for economical growth, cultural development, and of course, the constitutions and constructions of impressive structures such as cathedrals and castles. And finally, number one, widespread witch hunts. Yes, the notorious witch hunts associated with the Middle Ages mainly occurred during the later medieval and early modern periods from the 14th to the 18th century. The majority of the Middle Ages did not actually witness widespread witch trials. The witch trials were actually influenced by religious beliefs, social tensions, and a general climate of just fear. While the systematic witch hunts associated with the burning times occurred in the early modern period, accusations of witchcraft did exist in the later medieval period. Localized instances of persecution could arise from suspicions and superstitions as the transition of medieval to the early modern period brought about legal, social, and religious changes that contributed to the rise of systematic witch hunts. These changes include the growth of centralized states and the shifts in theological and legal thinking. Anyways, that's all for today, but be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, learning, and keep learning, and do cool stuff. All the best. Just bye.